in Central Park and you might see a pumpkin patch behind me. You're right. It's the annual pumpkin festival. You didn't miss anything over the summer. There were no vines growing, but pumpkins are important for the festival, which happens the week before Halloween. Right behind me, these are free. Central Park, come in next year. If you're in New York City for Halloween, you don't want to miss the Halloween parade, but definitely don't miss free pumpkins in Central Park for the Pumpkin Festival. I'm Ryan. Till next time. Hey, it's Ryan in Central Park for the annual Pumpkin Festival. And if you can see behind me, that's over 20 feet in the air of pumpkins. Let's go take a look. Hey, it's Ryan, and that is my official pumpkin from the Central Park Pumpkin Festival. Now, what I'm doing is, you can see, I'm scooping my hands in, pulling out some seeds. As you can see, I've got a few of them already right here. And what, what the plan now is to save these seeds until next spring, plant them, and then hopefully have my pumpkin festival pumpkin from Central Park grow forever. You're going to have to tune back in to see if it works, but this is where it all began. Hey everybody, it's Farmer Ryan. Well, I don't maybe I'm not a farmer yet. I'm well, I'm cultivating my seeds from the Central Park Pumpkin Festival pumpkin. So I guess that's kind of like the early stages of what a farmer would do. Well, here it is. I've got the seeds now. I just counted them out. It's under 30. I've got about 28 seeds. Here, take a look. Those are the seeds officially from the Central Park pumpkin that I scooped out. Now remember, my pumpkin came to me pre-carved. And then as I was lighting the candle, which came in the pumpkin, there were these seeds. And I was just like... Here's my chance to give back to Camp Sunshine and to this really wonderful event in New York City. So I was like, I'm going to save my pumpkins. I'm going to try to make this pumpkin last forever. And if any of these pumpkins grow, I plan to bring them back, to give them back to the event and support the great work that Camp Sunshine does. And, I, you know, bringing a pumpkin, is it the most profound thing I could do? I'm not sure, but you know, you never know. Whoever takes that pumpkin home, if it grows, it could make their week. And having a good week can really help your health. So let's hope these seeds grow. Let's take another look. Here they are. There's about 30 of them. I'm going to put them in this envelope right here, my Central Park pumpkin seeds. They've dried out for about a week. Let's see if I could do this and still show you what's going on here. This is not the most easiest of tasks. There are our seeds. They're going to go in here. And I tried to wipe off all of the, the, the pumpkin stuff that was on them so that it would just be a seed. Now, I had you know, looked into some research, and it said that you should even wash them in cold water. I was afraid that some of them might actually start to grow had I planted them in this envelope after washing them with cold water. So I did just wipe them off with a napkin, and I realized when doing that even that some of the seeds started to break in half. And at that point, I was like, these seeds cannot be thrown out. Even the ones that crack, you know, you have to believe. And I think that's part of what Camp Sunshine taught us through this event, is you really have to just believe. So I'm going to believe that even these broken seeds that maybe, you know, others might throw out, have a chance. And, you know, these 30 pumpkin seeds, well, here they are. They're in the envelope now. And, um... 
you know, let's really hope that they grow and that we get to give back to the people of Camp Sunshine at the 2009 Pumpkin Festival in Central Park. I'm Ryan. Wish me some luck and these great seeds too. Till next time. What a very sad phase. Hey, it's Ryan. It's Sunday, December, November 2nd, 2008. And I do believe it's time to say goodbye to our Central Park pumpkin. We'll take a look one more time at this thing and I'll tell you a little bit about how it came to this, well, very sad phase. It actually fell apart in that basket, which now resembles more of a casket. My apartment is about 70 something degrees all year long. Um, you know, with the air conditioning on, I can make it a little bit cooler, but the heat rises from people using hot water in the building, and to have a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin in your apartment, the poor thing didn't even last a week, and I, I didn't have the heart to throw it out. And I did get a few of those seeds out. Remember this story. This is the pumpkin from the Central Park Second Annual Pumpkin Festival, and they're pre-carved when you get these things, and there was about, say, 20 seeds left. So I scooped them out, and they're back upstairs in the apartment, and it'll probably be about six months from now, we'll plant those seeds, and hopefully this great Central Park pumpkin from the Pumpkin Festival will keep growing forever. It's a plan, it's a plan, and well now it's time to really just put it to rest for a little while. We are gonna say goodbye to this pumpkin. It's gonna turn into compost here at the Joan of Arc Circle. And I don't know, it's not looking so good, so I think it really needs its rest. Let's put it to bed. Recycle time. <laughs> like I said, it'll probably be about six more months from now until we meet again to talk about, well, this topic. Because around May, maybe even June is when those seeds will go in the ground. I'm Ryan, until next time. <laughs> Hey, it's Farmer Ryan, and I've got some really great helpers. These kids are with me to help the kids of Camp Sunshine. What we've got in this envelope are the seeds from the pumpkin that I got at the Central Park Pumpkin Festival. Hey, kids, do you know why we're planting these seeds? To, um, to, to help the other kids. That's right. So let's grab some of these seeds. They gave away free pumpkins in Central Park, and these seeds just happen to have been on the bottom. Gracie, go in and get some. And we're going to try and plant these, Matthew. Come on, everybody. Let's plant them in the dirt. With good energy, let's wish them good luck. Drop them in. Spread them out. Matthew, Bill, spread them out. Just shake them out. Drop all your seeds. Very good. Now let's grab the dirt, pull it over. Come on, everybody. Now we got a few more. Let's go to our second spot, just in case there's not enough sunshine over there for Camp Sunshine. Who wants to dump these in? Me, me. All right, dump them all in. Dump them all in. Here you go. Take the whole envelope. Let's cover these up. Alrighty kids, now the plan here is we want to get these pumpkins to grow so when the Camp Sunshine does this pumpkin festival in Central Park, New York City, we're going to bring the seeds that grew from last year's pumpkins and give them back and hopefully the kids at Camp Sunshine will have some brand new pumpkins from Matthew, from Bill, from Grace, and from Ryan. Wish us luck. Hey, it's Ryan, Sunday, August 16th, 2009. Now, we are in the garden, and it's time to catch in and give you an update on the Central Park pumpkin seeds. Now, if you remember correctly, grab some pumpkins out of the shell for my pumpkin from the Central Park Pumpkin Festival, which is a great event for your, uh, Camp Sunshine. And I came out here to Long Island to plant the seeds in an attempt to bring a pumpkin back to donate to Camp Sunshine. Let's check in on the vine. Now, I guess you're wondering, is there a pumpkin? Let's take another closer look. It's right here. Now, 
And it's official and we actually have our pumpkin. And there, there are actually some more flowers over here, you can see. There's a possibility that we might even have another smaller one to come with us. But this is true now. It is a success story. We have pumpkins from the seeds and they're going to Central Park. It's Ryan. Till next time. Hi, it's Ryan Walowski. I'm on the Carnival Legend, and we're here, well, for a Halloween-themed cruise. So we've totally decorated our room, and we started with our mailbox. As you can see, we personalized it. So when people drop us mail, they know exactly who it's going to. We're getting daily listings about things that are happening here on the cruise. There's going to be some special cocktail parties. There's going to be a Halloween gala ball. And all those things get dropped off for us on a daily basis right there. So here is the room at night. This is what it's going to look like when our guests enter. The place is totally done up. We've got masks along the wall. Now these candle bags that you see here, they actually don't have any candles in them. You cannot bring candles on the ship. What we did get are these little electronic candles. And when you put them into the basket over there, it looks as if there's a wickering candle. Same thing here. This actually is made of wax, but there is an electronic battery in there that you know flashes as if there was a candle. Now right here we've got a poster for one of my favorite Halloween events, the Greenwich Village Halloween Parade. And right here, there it is. That's the Greenwich Village Halloween Parade. We brought a DVD of some of the best clips so we can continue to celebrate the Greenwich Village Halloween Parade even though we're out at sea. Now speaking it out at sea, we have a Category 8H room which has this balcony which we've completely also decorated for Halloween. Now we see we have the lights coming through the door, but what we did was we put some tape up here. This way this light will never actually get closed, will never actually break when the door closes. And there is the dark, dark waters right out there. And the moon was out earlier. It's a great, great accessory for us to have when people are out there for our Halloween party. Now I'm going to show you the, uh, we've also decorated the bathroom area, which I will show you back here. And then we're going to go back into the room with the lights on. And you can see a little bit more in detail what we did to decorate right here in the Carnival Legend. So we picked up these masks that we used to decorate the space. Now they may just look like decorations, but what we're going to be doing with them is when we have guests that come to visit us, because we are going to host a cocktail party, we're going to give these things away to people. We've got a bunch of pumpkin hats here, a bunch of witch hats there, and then when they come to our party, they're going to get like gift bags of Halloween stuff. But here's one of the really personalizing things. We have 30 skull rings, so every single person that comes to visit us will have a skull ring to walk around the party with. These masks as well make for amazing decorations because they just, they're just scary in their own right. And we'll be giving these things away to our guests. As well as candy. We actually told people that they could come to our room for trick-or-treating. We've got this full thing. We've got little baskets here. Um, that we're going to put the candy and maybe even throw in some coins for those that don't eat uh, chocolate. But this is how we're celebrating Halloween at sea. It's Ryan Wolowski. Until next time. Hey, it's Ryan Wolowski. I'm in Cozumel, Mexico, and they're beginning to start decorating for Dia de los Muertos. Some of you kind of think of it as, well, Halloween in Mexico. It's, it's, it's a lot different. And uh, I'll show you some of the setups for the celebration of the holiday happening right here in the square. This is a preparation of one of the altars that will be out on display.
Now, if you ever have the opportunity to be in Mexico, do aim for late October, early November, so you can experience this yourself. It's daytime, it's nighttime, and there's something for the kids as well as something for the adults. I'm Ryan Wolowski in Cozumel, Mexico. Till next time. It's official, it's pumpkin picking season right here at Lewin Farm. And one of the great things about this experience is we are actually picking pumpkins. Unlike a lot of farms who drop pumpkins, here at Lewin, you actually are going out into the field where the pumpkins are still on the vine. Hence, they're really fresh and you actually are picking pumpkins. Now there certainly is an easier way. You can go out to a field that's been plowed and often pumpkins will be just trucked in and placed nicely on bales of hay. And as you can see, this definitely adds to the experience because when you go to pick a pumpkin, you really are picking a pumpkin. What's great about seeing these pumpkins this year like I said, it's October 8th of 2011. This is also the year of Hurricane Irene. And you could still see some pumpkin damage this way. The fear was that these pumpkins would be sitting. Well, here's a perfect example right here. That after Hurricane Irene, pumpkins would be sitting in vats of water and they would just be rotting, which is why going out pumpkin picking a bit earlier this year was definitely advised but you can see not all of the pumpkins were stuck in pools of idle water And whether you go out early or late, hopefully you'll find pumpkins as beautiful as this one.
Big long line there. Halloween is alive and well in Tijuana. Well, who expected that? Not I. I uh, thought it was the Day of the Dead. I thought it would all be celebrated on Tuesday, November 1st. But it's actually the Night of the Living. Yeah, Night of the Living. People are alive. Alive on last time right there and the costume has been pretty good I mean people are really scary doing a lot of like damage face makeup they're all into gore yeah uh, a lot of knives guns so really scary stuff not like sexy kitten although we've got two here the majority really are pretty scary like they're going for the scary image I should say instead of cute or like oh today's my day to dress like a hoe which tends to be the in thing in New York a sexy doctor a sexy nurse Halloween. Hi, I have no idea. It's about three o'clock. We've made one mistake after the other, and each mistake has turned out better than the other. We left the cemetery. We were on 25. We were looking for 25A. Never found the road. Ryan found out that they're plucked off their houses and they're left in the field and their husks are rather dry so they may be here for many a day. So, but that's it. It's just that the same of the game. But What's going great. on back here for all the kids? There's different places where they can take pictures, wagons galore, uh, corn husks that they could run through, uh, little games. It, it's just great. It's just absolutely wonderful. Now here's what you've all been waiting for, a walk in the sun in Pat's Creek. Later, Teresa. Right here. Thank you. Here are the Windy Acres pumpkins. Like a large pumpkin, this would be the field to go to. Pumpkin after pumpkin after pumpkin. Look at the size of this pumpkin here. A lot of activity over here. Now this is what Teresa was talking about. Although this is a pick your own pumpkin patch, you could clearly see that all of these pumpkins have in fact been previously picked. So you're picking up pumpkins, but you're not actually picking pumpkins. Now not that that's a bad thing, looking at the volume of pumpkins to pick from. And they're all of really good color and really good size. And they're actually placed rather well. So look at this thing through here. Now this is the part about pumpkins being pre-picked. You can see right here on this stem how very dry that is and this is quite brittle. 
So you don't know how long ago this pumpkin actually was picked. And it was 80 degrees yesterday. So that could mean the longevity of your pumpkin is slightly shortened. So if you are going to go pick your own pumpkins, look to see that the pumpkins are on the vine. That will give you the best longevity with your pumpkin. And at that point you actually will be picking pumpkins. Notice the fact of this field. I mean, look at the long there are to pick from. And they all have really, really good color. It's got like a fiery reddish orange going on here. And this is the scene from Windy Acres. here I am I have my gourds with me I have the pumpkin with me let me kind of show you these John bought these in Whole Foods he's got one his is nice and red and mom's is green I picked the green one because something about me has to be green if I'm gonna to go to Ireland <laughs> okay here we go so what happened when you showed up today though I was shocked I mean the, the grounds have been cleaned which I know they do the beginning of a month and they're getting ready for Halloween. And I said, it's so sparse, so big, so green. I couldn't believe it. One, one grave and this whole five or six acres had a pumpkin on it. So this is not your pumpkin? No, no. We gotta find out now who the pumpkin giver is. Uh, I'm sure it made their father Give him a fire hat, give him a helmet, give him a, a pumpkin, give him a, a baseball bat. Oh, let's go see. We're going to put these down. Now you grew those, these pumpkins, right? Yes. John found the plant in Whole Foods. And it, we thought it was a pumpkin, and we were only became educated. They are eggplants. Eggplants. And they look like pumpkins. And they serve the purpose. And here's the red one for John. The orange one, and there's the green one for mom. And here's our pumpkin. It's our donation, and this is it. It says John and Teresa Ryan are headed for Ireland for Halloween with a stop in Scotland. Love you, love Teresa and John. So the numbers haven't, names haven't changed. We've got, I've got the youngest people. Happy early Halloween, Dad. We put rocks in here because of the uh, wind factor. So we have the real one, and then we have the one that we purchased. Okay? And we have the one that we donated to Sean. I told you he had six angels, and you still have six angels. And he's Irish and Scottish, your husband? Yes. Uh, his mother was 100% Scotch. She was born in... Uh, what's the name of the main capital, John? Edinburgh. No, that's where Grandpa Tom came from. Uh, all right, Grandpa Tom is actually from Edinburgh, but people, I understand, were from Ireland and for many generations came up here in the need of the job. Apparently, Ireland was not very much in a productive state as Scotland was at that time. And the main reason you've always wanted to see Ireland is because your husband? Yes. Uh, many years ago, a sad circumstance turned out to be a happy one. I said their father was gone. We could spend the money on a psychiatrist to say, why did this happen to us? Or we could just blow the money and go to Poland. And that's what we did. To show me and the kids that there is. ended 
uh, on Halloween Eve and we found out for a few, less than a hundred dollars we could stay and see the parade and say we've gone to uh, Ireland for Halloween which is why we're bringing One pumpkins of the, and I understand their parade whatever it is it may be simple but it's been built up to such a momentum that it's one of the most famous Halloween parades I don't know what they do unless they throw the beer in the river I don't know but we're gonna find out we even heard Halloween started in Ireland what is something you could tell us about John Thomas Ryan to describe him as a person, his personality? An anecdote of your husband. He's a good man. He had an Irish streak or a Scotch streak. He had a, he had a temper streak, but it was over in hours. But God help you, when the storm was going on, it was pretty stormy. Uh, what, a, what is something positive about him? couldn't give me enough and it was the same as far as the kids are concerned. He thought he was a big disciplinarian but it would give them anything they want and that was him. Kind of a saucy. Mr. Saucy. And I'm glad we're here and I'm glad that he was the first person remembered in these five or six acres with a pumpkin. A bare green fertile soil. Maybe this is what Ireland looks like. But we walked up and John says, I think it's over there by the tree. And then he kind of veered towards the one spot in this whole area that had a pumpkin on it. And he said, I found my father. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you to both of my John. That's it. From here, we're going to go pumpkin picking and do all the things. Hey Teresa, we noticed that you're apple picking. Where are you and what's going on? Good Lord, I don't believe it myself. I'm in Scotland. I'm in Pitlockery. I'm holding apples. And it's a world of disbelief. You know how Alice in Wonderland woke up and said, how did I get here? I can't imagine. It's a miracle in itself. I'm enjoying it to the hills. You very rarely see the sun. I asked about the summer. Are things better? And you, our, our director says, not really. She said, this is what we are. And here we are now celebrating fall foliage and Halloween. Have you seen much of Halloween in Scotland yet? Uh, no, no, not as much as we thought. And the woman we just spoke to now, a young girl, she said, they just do it for this day. Yeah, and the other thing she said was very exciting about Halloween here in Scotland is that there are no cute costumes no ballerinas no uh princesses everything is about being ghosts or being really scary and uh representing the dead yeah <laughs> so this is a, this is some decorations that we're finding at um, the store right here in pit larkery and they've tied pumpkins to the tree we'll show you some of the scottish decorations that we've got here this one looks like it might glow in the dark here's a broom a little rat running across the bridge. Oh, you found a rat? Little rat running across the lawn. <laughs> little rat running. Maybe give him an apple. <laughs> oh, yes, the rat is apple picking. Ah, uh, look at us. <laughs> Love this. And uh, here's our Halloween display. Oh, my God. Here's another guy. He must be hungry, too. You're going to feed the rats? I'm going to give him a job. Give him his lunch. This is a bad one. He's got a tail beyond belief. Look at him. Look at him. Here we go. Ooh, he's happy. Well, that's the Halloween story from Pit Larkery, Scotland. Wish you were here. It's great. Till next time. Yeah. Greetings from the Pumpkin Patch. Hey, Teresa and Renee, where are you now? Windy Acres. Teresa, what do you love about this farm here? It's brought you back. 
Ah, uh, I guess it's where God dropped a lot of pumpkin seeds. Because every place you look, it's orange. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the other things here, Renee, at Windy Acres that you noticed that you liked? I like their turkeys. They have nice ducks. They even have a goat. They have a lot of stuff for children to play on. A lot of tunnels and swings and slides. And gonna get some nice roasted corn to wrap my lips around later. <laughs> and here is the playground for the children. Now, you brought your kids with you here today. Have you found them using the park area here? Oh yes, they love the uh, slides and the wooden structures and it's all done very nicely. They're climbing like crazy. Any additional fee for all that stuff? No, it's all free. All the little things are free for the kids. All the many little playgrounds and tunnels and all that. And they have the um, uh, cutouts for the children to put their heads in and you take a picture <laughs> and it's all free. It's nice. And Teresa, what are some of the things that you've been doing here today well, at Windy Acres? Well, they've got the best yet to see. They say feeding area for the animals and they are they're not caged and they have like a heavy chicken safe wire but there are and multiple animals they're different species and you'd be surprised these little guys are hungry whatever you give them they eat next thing you know they're doing, they're doing their business in the garden but this is what animal life is like and we're going to go see them in a little while and those animals would be back here at the end of the pumpkin patch. Next to the wagon, there is an actual small graveyard and a little chicken farm. Back here is the corn maze with the horse rides. But Renee, you want to go into the pumpkin patch and find a really good pumpkin? Yes. Teresa, I love the outfit. <laughs> it's Halloween. Here they come now. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna bring you into the pumpkin patch and we're gonna look for a really good pumpkin. And I'm gonna explain some things about pumpkin picking. Now, if you like large pumpkins, this is definitely the place. The size of these pumpkins are all eight, 10, 15 pounds, really large pumpkins. Renee, you wanna find one that you like? I might pick yes. this for you. Yes, you. What'd you find? Corn. Ah, uh, from the oh, corn maze? Wow. Yeah, here. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and if you notice the corn back there, we're not actually standing at the corn maze, but it's like 20 feet tall. This is pretty tall corn. Yes. So now you find yourself a pumpkin that you really like, and I'm going to explain something to you about picking pumpkins that will be really helpful to you. If you see this green stem right here on this pumpkin, that means it's recently been pulled from the vine, which would mean the pumpkin's more likely to last you a lot longer into the fall season. Now, if there's a pumpkin like this, where the stem is all dry, then you know that pumpkin was picked quite a while ago and might not last you quite as long. One of the other things about picking pumpkins here you may notice is none of these pumpkins are actually on the vine. These pumpkins have been placed into the pumpkin patch. So although you are in fact picking pumpkins, these pumpkins have already been picked. That's why you kind of want to check out the stem. Now let's check in with Renee. Did you find yourself a pumpkin you like? I'm still looking. I do see oh. one over there that's quite lovely and shaped nice. Bring us on over and introduce us to the girls. Okay, this child is Carmen. This is my 10 year old. And that child with a nice smile is Angela. Carmen, eight. Carmen what have you enjoyed today at the pumpkin patch? I'm getting the big giant pumpkin. Nice. With a green stem. Nice. What was your favorite thing today at the pumpkin patch? Pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds. Now, Renee, your pumpkin is? Ah. Ah, so this good. pumpkin seems nice. Ow. Nice, sturdy pumpkin. Ah. <laughs> so many to choose yeah. from. And it's a little bit early in the season, so we do, in fact, have a great selection here. We've got some very nice ones. And that is the story here from Windy Acres. Happy fall harvest. Happy uh, Halloween. And like say, yeah. next one, you're, we're going to show you the corn maze. The corn maze indeed is right here next to the pumpkin patch. The entrance is in the front and it goes all the way back to the end of the pumpkin farm. Oh, so nice. That's it. Till next time from the pumpkin patch. Hey Teresa, where are you? I'm in Dublin, Ireland, and I'm having a beautiful, beautiful time. We see you've got your Dublin flags, and you're all set for the holiday. Now it is believed, hey everybody, it's Ryan and Teresa. It is believed that the holiday of Halloween 
was created right here in Ireland. And we thought that that would be an excellent place to wish you a happy Halloween. Trick or treat. Hey everybody, it's Ryan and Teresa trick-or-treating in London, England, and we wanted to wish you all a very happy Halloween. Wish you were here. Come on, we gotta go. Greetings from Windy Acres. Let's check in with the Ryans who are pumpkin picking today. Hey Jim, how's your day? Great, having a wonderful time. Now if you could have only one thing pumpkin, what would it be? Pumpkin soft serve ice cream, the best. <laughs> Had it yesterday. Let's check it with Peggy. One pumpkin thing you would have, what would it be? Pumpkin milkshake. Where would you get that? Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> Off to Pennsylvania. Hey Kelly. Hi. What would be the one pumpkin thing you'd want? Pumpkin coffee. Where would you get that? Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Not Teresa. Uh, I think pumpkin pie. I started making them when I was about 10 years old. I love them. Your very own. <laughs> And she's, no, she's known for her pumpkin pies. They're good, yes. I would do pumpkin aromatherapy. <laughs> Where, other than a pumpkin patch, would you get pumpkin aromatherapy? Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go with my family and the pumpkin patch. Here it is. Enjoy. Bye. <laughs> Greetings from the Pumpkin Patch. Hey Renee, how are things going today? Wonderful. What is the name of this beautiful farm we are visiting today? Windy Acres. Now I see you and the girls are dressed up nicely for the holiday. What are you looking forward to most this year for Halloween? Um, well, we're really looking forward to uh, going out to the village restoration. Uh, we love the <laughs> Halloween <laughs> happenings <laughs> there. Uh, we're really looking forward to dressing up. Every year I'm a witch and uh, it's a time of year when you get to dress up as your true character and go out in public. <laughs> Carmen, what are you going to be this year for Halloween? A zombie and I guess I'm guess going to say that last year which I was a vampire. My friends no. even recognized me. Well done. Angela, what are you going to be this year for Halloween? A vampire, and you won't. You will still need a gold badge or a cat. <laughs> I a now you're out pumpkin picking. You want to tell us some tips about pumpkin picking? Yes, you must always, always feel your pumpkin <laughs> from top to bottom and make sure that it's a very firm, full <laughs> pumpkin. You don't want any soft spots. Hey everybody, it's Ryan, Renee, Carmen, and Angela. We're here pumpkin picking at Windy Acres Farm. We're going to show you some of the beautiful pumpkins that stand alongside of the corn maze. But Renee found one particular pumpkin that has not been carved but already has a face. Renee, what's going on with that? Yes, this uh, pumpkin uh, has chosen to get its own face on for the season. <laughs> And it looks like this pumpkin is frowning. Why would, it looks terrified why, to me. Why would it be a frowning pumpkin? 
Well, here's some more of the pumpkin patch at Windy Acres Farm. Happy fall harvest uh, season and happy early Halloween. Now we are out on the first weekend of October, so the field is still full of pumpkin after pumpkin. And it stands right next to the corn maze. And here are some of the pumpkins. Yeah! Till next time. Pumpkins, 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 pumpkin, 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 pumpkins, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Pumpkins, pumpkin, 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 Greetings from the pumpkin patch. It's autumn in New York. Let's check in with the pumpkin pickers. Let's start with Teresa. How was your it's afternoon nice at Windy Acres? It, it's nice to say it's my fourth year being here. And it's uh, more people each Daddy year. Cakes. Oh yeah. It's, it's really good. And now this is your fifth year in a row pumpkin picking and fourth year at Windy Acres. What is it about this farm that you love for the autumn? Uh, there's so much here for the kids. Colorful. Uh, when I walk, when you walk in from the road, you go through the actual store where they have the vegetables, which gives it a very country scene. And then when you walk out and you go into the field, it's amazing. You, all you see is children and people and red and black just running in front of your face. It's it truly indicative of what this holiday is. Fun. And speaking of maize, we've got a fan of the corn maze. Angela, how is the corn maze this year at Windy Acres? It is a love leaf swacking me in the face. <laughs> now, how about your pumpkin picking? How did you do this year? Good. What kind of pumpkins did you look for? Big ones, small ones? Yeah, I like the very little. Now, next to the corn maze back over here, there are the live farm animals where we caught up with Carmen. Tell us about your experience with the farm animals at Windy Acres. I love the new baby cow that they have. It's so cute. <laughs> now you were carting around your pumpkin after you picked it because you didn't want anyone else to take it. Yeah. What is so special about, let's get a shot of your carded pumpkin over there. What was so special about that particular it's big, pumpkin? Big. <laughs> and I see you and your sisters wore twin shirts. Very, very nice, very nice. Let's check in with Renee. How's pumpkin picking with the family this year? Oh, very lovely. Now you're coming here now three years in a row. What brings you back to Windy Acres? They just have so much for everyone. Now you enjoyed the front of the farm this year, the hot apple cider. And How was that? It was crumb diddly umptious. <laughs> now we just got here and your apple cider container, is it full or is it empty? It's quite empty. Is it that fresh? It's that fresh <laughs> and that empty and just that marvelous and appalicious. Let's check in with John, who skipped pumpkin picking last year. What got, what got you back in the field for this year? I think it's just beautiful out today. I'm so glad that I came. It's such a nice day, and just to see everything and all the colors and just enjoy it with everybody. It's been a blessing today. And look at that. Not a cloud in the sky. Now, before we go into the pumpkin patch, Carmen and Angela, you want to give us a tip for people when they're pumpkin picking? And I use the word tip particularly as uh, an example of what you'd want people to know about when they're picking pumpkins. Watch out for the vines, they're killers. <laughs> yeah, watch out for the vines, they don't smash any pumpkins while you fall down. <laughs> and let's look at the tip on this pumpkin. How brown is that? What type of advice would you tell someone when they're picking pumpkins and they see a brown stem like um, that? Don't pick it, get a green one. Why? Because the green ones last longer and also don't carve it right away. And no one likes a wood that's brown. <laughs> There you go. Let's go into the pumpkin patch and check out a little bit of the pumpkin. Ray, you want to help us find a pumpkin? Sure. Here is the pumpkin pack, pumpkin patch at Windy Acres. It is a pick your own. There are some pumpkins still on the vine, real small ones this year. 
Um, but what we were talking about before with the brown stem versus oh the green stem, this was just picked. So you kind of know that this may last you straight into to Halloween or maybe even to Thanksgiving if you're not going to carve it. Now we are in the second weekend of October and the fields are still full. Last weekend there was a hurricane in New York, a suspected hurricane, Hurricane Joaquin. And so a lot of people are coming out for the first time. Now here is a pumpkin on the vine. Of course it's too small, you wouldn't want to pick this one. Um, but here are the beautiful pumpkin oh. vines that are still growing. So this one that's the indoor plant. What did you find that was special about that one? It's it has an indent in it like This pumpkin has an any belly button. <laughs> <laughs> this one's quite nice. It's firm, has a green stem. Stem's a little soft, which shows that it's still fresh. No soft spots on the pumpkin itself. That's and what you look for. Look at that color. As it's under the sun setting here on the pumpkin patch, the orange is just a glow. Another baby pumpkin. Now, is this a baby pumpkin or is that a gourd? I have no idea. This is indeed a baby pumpkin. Although you can buy pumpkins that are that small, they'll be in the gourd family and they can last you all the way through the winter season. And that's just some of the highlights here as we're pumpkin picking, celebrating the autumn fall harvest. Till next time. Hi. Greetings from Hank's Pumpkin Town in Watermill, Long Island, New York. Hey Teresa, how are things today in the pumpkin patch? Very nice. It was actually very warm. Uh, many children were here and it was just good. Uh, it was my first time here and I didn't think that we could consume the whole day here. And here it is going on 6 o'clock and we still haven't finished. <laughs> what were some of the things that you enjoyed here in Hank's Pumpkin Town? Just the outdoorsness. The inception of the holidays around the corner, uh, people happy being together. Uh, we even got phone calls congratulating us for coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, in all in all, it was a great day. And I, I like the attire, by the way. Very nice. Hey everybody, it's Ryan and Teresa, and greetings from Hank's Pumpkin Town. Here's just a quick glimpse. We're going to show you some of the things uh, in the area when you arrive here to enjoy in the autumn season here on Long Island. Teresa, thank you for that introduction. Okay, thank you. Now, which was your favorite behind you in the uh, collection of art? I enjoyed the. Uh, I enjoyed the the, the what is it? The cow. The big cow. The cow. The cow. <laughs> and here again, this is Hank's Pumpkin Town. Now what's really beautiful about seeing these pumpkins is pumpkins never grow this close to each other. So to be out in the pumpkin patch this early in the season, it's just overwhelmingly orange. And it's just really beautiful to see. So most of these pumpkins are off of the vine because as I said, they never grow this close, but the, the, the volume of pumpkins that there are to pick from is just plentiful and beautiful. You know, the wooden cutouts are here for kids to play on. Now, I think this is for everyone to play on. This is uh, the big chair of Hank's Pumpkin Town in Watermill, New York. I guess if the whole clan of families could climb up there and they can get their, their picture. There's actually so much to do here that there's even a map. From the corn maze to the market. Pick up your own wheelbarrows. Although you do buy your pumpkins by the pound and they have, you pick giant pumpkins, which are back this way. So here's where you get your pumpkins weighed. This year they are 69 cents a pound. <laughs> Now we are visiting the Big Apple, New York. And here are some really great things. They have apple facts. So if you bring yourself or your kids out here, you can get some uh, nutrition information about food. Speaking of food, you can come in and shop the farmer's market.
And if there was smell aroma, you would smell pumpkin pie. Bottom flowers for sale, mums. Trevor Tristan. Wanna get the wanna get the, the thing so we can get the pumpkin? Now pumpkins come in all different sizes and there are gourds. I once bought these pumpkins in a supermarket and they were rung up as garlic. Uh, there's so many different types and I got a better price as well. There is so many, because they thought it was garlic. There are so many different types of pumpkin we're gonna try to show you uh, the idea that there's so much to be had here. Again, more information. Is pumpkin a fruit or a vegetable? Fruit. It's really great that you can come here and you can get pumpkin facts. Here is your entrance to the corn maze. At Hank's Pumpkin Town. Thanks, and uh, yeah, just text me an email. I'll get it off to you tonight. Just put the Thank you. Now, if you were to continue heading down this direction towards the right on Montauk Highway, you would be in East Hampton, or keep going further, and you would be at the Montauk Lighthouse. Heading back this way, you would find yourself uh, heading towards Mastic Beach, Fire Island, if you went down that direction on Montauk Highway. Here is the graveyard, R.E.P. Frank Einstein. It's empty, but not for long. There's a witch in the pumpkin field, and it seems that she's got some apples. Cutouts, you know, but some of them, they have some more back there. You can put your head through and you'd actually be the witch. But what would the pumpkin patch be without Charlie Brown? And there is Snoopy flying his way into the pumpkin patch looking for the great pumpkin. But before we do that, there's one more cutout I want to show you. And it asks a simple question. How tall this fall? So you know, if you're bringing your young ones with you, um, how tall they were the year that you went into the pumpkin patch. Speaking of, this is where we are headed now. And there's a surprise. Not only does Hank's Pumpkin Town have giant pumpkins, they've got pumpkins in different shades. And they are growing out here. Now here's what I was talking about where you can put your heads through. You would be a sunflower. Let's put our heads through and see the pumpkins. And now as we walk into the pumpkin patch, we see that they do have a large collection of the giant pumpkins. And they go on for quite a while. Similar to the smaller pumpkins, it's early in the season. It's the uh, second weekend of October. So the stock is full. And here is a look with the sun glaring down. Orange is the color, but not on this side. These are going to be all white pumpkins as we head over towards the corn maze. And here is a, they look like ghosts when you see them like this. And I'm imagining when the sun is setting that they must have uh, a really interesting glow on the porch. And that's just a quick glimpse of some of the highlights here at Hank's Pumpkin Town in Watermill, New York. Happy autumn. Till next time. Greetings from Watermill, New York at Hank's Pumpkin Town. Let's check in with the queen of the pumpkin town, Teresa. You've got the right outfit on. What are you going to tell us about now as we well, pumpkin pick? I'm just looking at my own statistics. I've been doing pumpkins for over 80 years, so I'll give you my first question. What is the average weight of a pumpkin? 12, 20, or 25 pounds? And what do you think? 20. And here are our questions. And what is the average weight of a pumpkin? Answer is 12 pounds. Oh, I didn't make it. Okay.
Okay, move on to the next question. Okay. What per, what percent of a pumpkin is water? Uh, I would say over 50%. Pumpkin? Yes. Let's find out. What percent of pumpkin is water? Answer is 90% of it is water. Wow, I should have gone higher. So you could you could actually drink this pumpkin and hydrate it your sunny day okay. out on the farm. Uh, what is the record weight of the largest pumpkin grown ever? Maybe a hundred, but I don't think he could walk though. A hundred pounds? A like hundred. A hundred pounds. pounds. Over a hundred. Okay. But he could not walk. What is the record of the largest pumpkin ever grown? 1,689 pounds. That was the record set in 2007. I don't think he bought it on this property. <laughs> Here's the last one. Actually, speaking of this property, there are some really big pumpkins back there. Uh, but over a thousand pounds, that's, that's, that's a record. Now we have one last question. Is a pumpkin a fruit or a vegetable? I would say, I hope he's not insulted, but I think he's a fruit. Let's check <laughs> out fruit or vegetable. It is a fruit. The first one I won. <laughs> All right, Teresa. And now the last question. I'm getting better. How much fun is it to pick pumpkins every autumn? It's a great thing. It means that you're here next year and the year after that, and God knows how much longer. <laughs> Thank you for that wisdom and information from Watermill, New York at Hank's Pumpkin Town. Till next time. <laughs> Greetings from Hank's Pumpkin Town. Hey Teresa, how are things this autumn on the east end of Long Island? Very festive and very happy and the children, you know, even the parents are having fun. So you can't knock it. Now many folks put corn on the front door, so corn on the cob has made its way into the Halloween season. Are you ready to give us some corn facts? I don't know them, but I'll, I'll, I'll flip the lid and I'll tell you the answer. <laughs> okay, let's okay. start with it. There are 12 states that make up the corn belt. Can you name them? I guess Iowa, Illinois. I'm kind of lost. Okay. Let's let's go to the plate. If I have two right, it's at least fifty percent. Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, Minnesota, Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, South Dakota, Michigan, Missouri, Kansas, and Kentucky. I didn't think Wisconsin would make that. There would be too cold there for them. Our next corn fact. 250. No, ask the question. How many kernels on an ear of corn? I'd say 250. And the answer is, they're an average of 800 kernels and 16 rows. <laughs> it's a lot more corn. I must be giving out little corns. <laughs> All right. Name some products we get from corn. Corn starch, corn meal, uh, Candy corn? <laughs> candy corn, candy corn. Candy, candy corn. Let's see what we get from corn. Corn on the cob, sugar, and fuel. Our last corn fact. True or false? There is always an even number of rows on an ear of corn. If I remember the first card, I would have known the answer, but I don't know. Uh, I would say it's it's there's always an even number. She's saying it is true. There is always an even number. It is true. Okay. Mother Nature done well. Now that's our last question. Here's how is your favorite way to have corn? In my hand and holding it near my mouth. <laughs> no barbecued, grilled. Uh, I I like it in all ways. Even the barbecued is good, and the the corn uh, that's cooked in a pot is good and people throw it on the uh, in the oven and some even roast it with the uh, green husk on it and that keeps it more moist. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your knowledge from the farm. Thanks Pumpkin Town. Till next time. Greetings from Watermill, New York. Hey Teresa, how are things today in the Big Apple, New York? Uh, I think I'm taking my last test. We're going to take care of apples. Energy is needed from how many leaves to produce one apple? I would say probably 
50. Energy is needed from how many leaves to produce one apple? 50. 50. Next apple fact, Teresa. How many apples are used to make a gallon of cider? Um, maybe 500. 36 apples. 36 apples. <laughs> oh, those apples. <laughs> okay. Uh, how many pounds of apples are needed for a nine inch pie? Um, I'll give you 25 apples. 25 apples. Now you make apple pie, do you not? But I don't count the apples. <laughs> Answer is? Two pounds, six to seven medium. Oh, I use a lot more apples than I do that. Okay, uh, why do fresh apples float? It's sick again, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Because 25% of apples volume is air. Now Teresa, you make apple pie. What is the secret ingredient to your apple pie? Someone from the, the Big Apple, someone from New York. What's the answer for your apple pie? Cinnamon. Cinnamon? A lot of cinnamon. Do you place it on top and let it melt in? Do you turn the apples and cover them in cinnamon? Uh, Do you put it in the crust? No, I don't. I never thought of doing it that way. I have sometimes sprinkled it on the top, but I've never put it in the crust. But it, 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 no matter what you do, you can't kill an apple, an apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have apple cider with your apple pie? If somebody gave it to me, <laughs> I never refuse a gift. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> okay. Till next time, from Hank's Pumpkin Town in Watermill, New York. Greetings from Watermill, New York. Let's check in with Teresa, who is in the pumpkin patch. How are things here at Hank's Pumpkin Town? Very orange and very happy and very Halloween. Greetings from Watermill, New York. And let's check in with Teresa, who is hanging out in the pumpkin patch. Hey, Teresa, how are things here at Hank's Pumpkin Town? Coming up orange. <laughs> it's really great. No. It's, we could have had a better day. The weather was great, the kids were just jumping happy, and uh, you know what, even the big people were jumping and happy. So I guess we, we hit a good one. Speaking of, you had your photograph taken. People admired your pumpkin theme, correct? Yes. Now we learned a few things on the way in. Pumpkins, fruit or vegetable? They were fruit. And how much of it is water? Um, almost 90%. Wow. Now how do the pumpkins look this year? We're here on the second weekend of October. How's the stock look? They're like old ladies, they're big and chubby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. It's Ryan and Teresa, and here is a quick view of some of the pumpkins in the pumpkin patch. What's some of the interesting things here about the color of the pumpkins? Uh, well, so primarily they are orange, but they do have a species with the white ones. Uh, they look like they're albino. <laughs> <laughs> a whole field of orange and white pumpkins. Here's a quick glimpse. We're going to show you some of the pumpkins. Do enjoy. Thank you for that introduction, Teresa. Okay. See you next pumpkin. So here is the pumpkin field. Now what's interesting about seeing all these tarps is that you would think that the pumpkins have been just placed here, but this was uh, actually strategically planted to keep the weeds down and for watering purposes. Some of these pumpkins are indeed still on the vine. So although we see many placed pumpkins, there's many pumpkins here that have officially grown. This is the east end of Long Island in Watermill. Now this whole field is orange on orange on orange. But as Teresa mentioned, if we go over here to our right, heading towards the corn maze, there is a whole selection of white pumpkins, which are also still growing on the vine. Now I found that with the white pumpkins this year, maybe because less people are picking them, but the shape is really, really, really beautiful. They're very round 
and very symmetrical. Speaking of symmetrical, look at how beautiful this one is. Now the pumpkins here are sold by the pound and you'll see people with wheelbarrows so it looks as if you buy them by the barrel but they'll subtract the weight of the barrel when they do the final weigh-in or you could just put your pumpkins on the scale. And now we've got the, the, the mini the sugar pumpkins. These are really good for cooking. Or if you have a small apartment and you have a porch, these are really great. And there is the corn maze. And that is your look of Hank's Pumpkin Town in Watermill, New York. Till next time, happy autumn. Greetings from the Royal Caribbean Anthem of the Seas, and shall I say, best witches. Hey, Teresa, happy Halloween. Oh, I think it's a great day. Now tell me, you have celebrated Halloween in New York, you've celebrated Halloween in uh, Dublin, Ireland, London, England. And, and I think Poland. And now you're on a cruise ship. What's Halloween like at sea? Well, I think the Irish really enjoy it. <laughs> no, really, they're, they're very good. They're playing the music and then people are all happy, smiling, clapping their hands. It's great. Now we know Halloween is originated from Ireland and you've got your glasses on from Killarney. Did you expect to be trick-or-treating on a cruise ship? No, but it's not a bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any other Halloween activities on the ship today? Oh, they had, had a, a sedate library where the dishes and the, and the books were just walking about across the, the whole library. Oh, they, they can make miracles happen here. And there was two pumpkin patches, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I can't imagine what these poor Irish people will look like tomorrow morning. I mean, tonight's a good one. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Happy Halloween. Enjoy your trick-or-treating. Till next time, from the Royal Caribbean Anthem of the Seas. Hola, and greetings from Mexico. Let's check in with Teresa, who is seeing for the very first time a Dia de los Muertos altar, Day of the Dead altar. Hey, Teresa, how is your afternoon in Mexico? Very good, and I'm here honoring my mother-in-law and my in-laws, and they themselves came from Scotland. The food here is just gorgeous, but I know people from Scotland, what she'd like is a cup of tea and a scone. So if we can accommodate her, that would make her a happy day. Thank you, Teresa. Now what we're going to show is uh, this Day of the Dead altar. Here is Dia de los Muertos. And what you would do is you would leave photographs out of people that you're honoring, but also the food and things that they loved when they were in the physical world. And so some people refer to it as Halloween in Mexico, but indeed it is not. You're not getting candy by dressing up. You are giving food to those that you loved. And you're honoring them in all the ways that you know that they enjoyed in the physical world. So who are some people that you would leave food out for? Let's say, what would you leave food out for your father, Peter well, Wolowski? For my father, my father came from Brooklyn, and I think nothing would make him happier than a cup of tea and a bagel and a pile of cream cheese on it. <laughs> and maybe even a little beer on the side. <laughs> and that would be for your father. Yeah. Now your husband, John Ryan, uh, what were some of the things that you would leave? You'd probably leave a photograph of him as a fireman, right? As a fireman, that was his life. And, and what he, food thing? As far as food? <laughs> and the firehouse, you just grab something to eat quickly between belts. So I, he would take something pretty quick. A piece of scone, a cup of tea, uh, some jello, jelly, and he'd be on, a, on the truck with jelly-filled hands. <laughs> but he'd be there. Okay, let's show a little bit more from this altar. Now seeing the idea Dia de los Muertos altar. Do you understand now the difference coming from New York, the difference between Halloween and the Day of the Dead? Yes, and you have this with many different nationalities, just as in certain cemeteries they will leave a stone there to say that they visited, that they cared, that they loved. So 
So I think this is a beautiful tribute. You know, some people actually will stay away from altars. They consider them scary. Do you consider this a pretty display of love or a scary experience? It's a way of saying to yourself, I love that person and that person was put to me. And this made me happy. Great. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, I love the beautiful jewelry that you have on honoring the beautiful country of Mexico. Gracias. Thank you. Till next time, from Mexico.